All right, so we're back in the game lab. I've got the controller uh, wired into my computer. Should work well, I hope. Uh, let's see if it goes. So again, when we're dealing with the controller, we're not dealing with this key up, key down mapping. Right? We're not saying, hey, whenever they push a button, whenever something happens, we want to trigger a response. So what we're going to do is in our loop here, when we update, we're going to see what is the controller doing. And then we can go affect our game based on what the controller is doing at that tick. Remember, this is about 60 times a, t a second or so um, for this update function. You, know, you probably aren't going to do anything crazy where it would ever get slower, but there's a chance it might not be 60 times a second exactly, right? This is going to be limited by how fast we can process things. So um, but that ought to work. So let me go steal my um, controller piece here. Um, this is... Where did I have that? I don't remember where I put it now. Let's see. Uh, in my game update, did I put that in there? Let's see. Oh, goodness. Uh, let's see my pong glass here. There we go. So we have a. Did I put it all in one file? Oh, that's bad. Why would I do that? So there's just a gamepad class. That we use and we can say hey how many of them are there right for multiplayer mode you probably have more than one depending on how many you want to connect here so we're going to look and see what happens with this gamepad so i'm just going to steal all of this code essentially um, let's bring it over to xaml pong so in update then that's the ball this is the paddle here um so somewhere around here we'll just do it at the end here let's throw it in at the bottom so say, okay if there's a gamepad I want to do something with it, right? If I detect any that are connected here. So I'm going to say, okay, let me grab that controller. Now I only need this here. Um, I didn't need it, I don't need it as a class level variable, so that's okay. So I can add this in as a gamepad for my controller. Uh, is that not the right? No, gamepad. Gamepad. Should be the type of gamepad. Oh, that's not lowercase p, sorry. <laughs> um, so I got my controller, and then now what I can do is I can move based on what the left thumbstick X is doing. Now, I also set it up that you can move the Y. You probably don't want to do that, but that way I could like move the paddle up and down for fun. Like, we're probably again, not going to use the Y code right here right now, so I'm just going to leave that commented out here. But that's my player's paddle, so I'm going to move the, that's the bottom paddle is the player here, right? I had a better name for it, so it'll be my bottom paddle dot x and we're going to increase it by the reading of the thumbstick so the thumbstick reading here if you just hover over the help text i don't know how you can see that it's going to be between negative one and positive one so negative one being it's all the way left positive one meaning it's all the way right so it's actually really easy for me to just add that to whatever the x value is we'll just go as far left as you want to go as far right as you want to go and again we don't have any bounds checking yet we should probably do that right to make sure that um whether or not we collided with the wall we should go um you know we, we could add more of that here. We had to do that for the keyboard input, so we can need to do a similar thing for bounce checking. So maybe it makes more sense to see, hey, if it collided, let's just change their X um, rather than just not doing that. I can just set their X to a particular value so it can't get further than this um, if I wanted. So I think um, maybe we'll just pull these out when we get to it. Um, so we'll leave it for now. And then I don't need the obstacle but you can say okay to see what buttons are being pushed you use the controller reading which is the get current reading from the controller and you go to the buttons collection and you ask it if it has a flag set and this uses an enum of here's all the different buttons so individually you can say hey is the a button being pushed is the b button being pushed is the x button being pushed is the y is the trigger button being pushed is this and you know every button that's on the controller here it's got the enum for so our gamepad um, buttons dot right and you can say hey is the d-pad being down these sort of things the shoulders um, so any of those being pushed here we can check on using our flags and see okay if they push this button now I want to do something with it here so in this case I threw in new random bricks but you guys are doing brick breaker so I didn't want to do all that demo code for brick breaker but you could go and read a reading here I'll just leave that commented out here um, for how you would check to see if a button's being pushed essentially here. So that should be all I need now. So if you're doing multiplayer mode, right, we'd want not just the first gamepad, right, this is just 
this is a quick little link to give me the first one out of the, the list here. You need first and second or you know index zero, index one, those sort of to get the different readings. Um, you know, we're starting low with the demo, right? There's work for you folks to do for fun. Um, that's what we call it, right? When, when I only give you a little bit and say, go figure out the rest yourself, that's fun. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so let's see if it works. Let me give it a run. Now, a couple controllers occasionally, hey, look at that, moving, moving the joystick. Um, have a little bit of drift, depending on how old your controller is and if it's been beaten up or not. It might be like permanently just ever so slightly to the left. So just be a little bit cautious on that. And you, you could check and say like, hey, if it's more than like 0.01, then I'm okay to do something with it. So like a fraction, a little bit of drift isn't just like, it's not always going to be dragging to the left. That the Nintendo Switch controllers do that, the Joy-Cons, right? Don't they have that drift issue? Um, so I think the Xbox controls are a little sturdier than the Switch ones, but occasionally you'll get that drift and we can just compensate for it in code, right? You probably don't ever want to move just a tiny bit at a time here, so make them really jam on the joystick to go left and right. But now I can actually do both, right? I can do my keyboard left and right, one pixel at a time per, t per, uh, per tick, or I can actually use the controller. And I did five times because the 1x speed was really slow, right? I don't know if you saw in the code here, this was that reading times five because it was just moving so <laughs> slow otherwise. Um, the weird thing with the Y reading, so if you do the up and down readings, um, pretty sure this ended up being inverted. I was confused, so for some reason I was multiplying by a negative five to undo the inversion because going up is the negative value, but the Y value going lower means it's going to the top of the screen Right, so you, you want, or whatever it happened, I think up was the positive, no, up must have been the positive, right, and down was probably the negative. Um, so but that's a pretty quick, easy thing for you to flip if you want to be able to move that around. Um, and if we want to turn that back on, right, we can do that. Why not? We'll just play with it. Take our bottom paddle. Um, it has a Y attribute. We've never changed it before, but now, look, now I can change my Y paddle. Right, now I can go up and down. Go hit the ball. Now, our collision detection is probably not great here, and I'm going to run into issues if I mess around too much with it here, but uh, if I keep it pretty still, I should be okay. Like running into it, got, kind of got it confused, right? But again, that's, we just sort of did some bad collision detection and we haven't changed anything that says the paddle can't run into things, right? Where we could fix all of that later if you wanted to say, hey, now my paddle can't run into the walls, can't run into the ball, those, you could fix that in code. Right? You don't have to allow those sorts of things. Um, so just giving you some options here. This is, gets to be a little silly, but kind of fun. So I think a lot of the, uh, um, Space Invader games, you can move up and down a little bit with the ship, right? You don't have to, and it's okay if you just want to do an x-axis, but if you'd also like the y option, that's really easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to figure out the, like, it should speed up more to the left and right depending on my angle here, right? I should kind of draw this as a, as a bit of an ellipse and have a, a curved puck to it or you know, all sorts of fun options here. So that's using the gamepad controller. It's pretty fun. Um, all right, let me commit that here. So here's the gamepad, or, I don't know, controller code, I don't know, controller button handling. Sure, I'll put that in. Uh, so I'll get that out there for you as well. Um, I was going to spend time redoing this in a class for Pong and then putting everything that way. I feel like that's a bit of a waste of a time now. Rather, it'd probably be better to just work on the project. Is that, is that okay? Uh, like so the, my other I can show you the other version real quick here um, like it had a pong class and then the pong class had okay here's the paddles here's the list of things I had power-ups I had bricks and things I, I added some other stuff we, we got a little further with the demo um, probably spent a little bit more time on it here um, we didn't make it to the state playoffs last year which okay <laughs> um, so and this one it would figure out when the game was over to go to an end screen and it had some additional logic right we, we haven't Maybe we've cut a couple corners on the demo. I apologize um, for that. So this would go in and look for this. So the controller then, or I'm sorry, the class then could accept the image because remember we have to load the image in the XAML page with that async thing. So it would pass it to Pong and then it would have its list of things. It would add the ball. It would figure out which way we're going, set up our, our directions here, do all that sort of stuff we're doing in the, uh, the XAML page code, but in its own class. Just to kind of organize this, clean it up a little bit nicer here, all the logic is fine, it works in your XAML page, but it's you know, a little bit ugly to have all of this in your XAML page rather than here's the class that represents my game, right? And it has all of its objects here. We just didn't separate it well, that's all. So, you know, there's no points for doing it that way, but life will be easier for you. It'll be easier to break out work for in your group to say, okay, hey, let's break it into a class here and you get to take these ones here and I'm gonna take these ones here. 
and then we'll put it together later. If you're all trying to update your main page XAML CS file, it'll go a little harder, right? So again, that helps us when we design it and divvy up the work and say, okay, let's do these pieces. It's easier to do a piecemeal like that, okay? All right, awesome. So I'll go ahead and stop recording. We can hang out in the lab, play. Uh, we got the Xboxes if you wanna play with those. You can just do them on your laptops or the computers here if you want. Um, and then for next week, we'll plan to just meet in here. Anyone who wants to show up and work, we got the whole night to do that. I can hang out and answer questions. That would be a great time to bring questions because um, I'm here and I've got the time to do it. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to work me with you. We can do Zoom screen shares and things like that. Otherwise, if you're running into issues. Um, but like, if you don't come next week and then like in two weeks on Thursday at noon and you email me or call me and say, Eric, it's not working, I'm much more limited in my options here. <laughs> okay, uh, just... Just want to put that out there. I'm not going to tell you to go away, but I'm much more limited in what I can do if you wait until the very last minute. So, all right. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I love C Sharp. It's a fantastic language. We can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. I'm sorry we didn't get to do all of the really cool things. Um, we can do web stuff with it, which is really cool. Um, but the, we have a whole web class, so I, I skipped that. The database stuff is fun. Um, I think you probably watched the video. I hope you watched the video when I was sick. Um, we didn't do the project on it. It's not the end of the world. Um, if you just play with it, run a little demo, you can tell someone you've worked with it is good. Again, when you build out your resume and you're saying what all your skills are, don't call yourself an expert. Everyone knows you're not. Right? It's very few people get out of school at the expert level. That's okay. But like, hey, you know, I've, I've been introduced. I, I'm at an intro level of this or, I, you know, a, a, a intermediate level of this. Or I've done what we'd like to see in resumes when I was on my, my hiring team is we'd like to see stuff that people did. Everybody who gets a computer science degree has a computer science degree. I don't care if you've done the traveling salesman algorithm. I do, everybody does it, right? It's not a fancy thing to put on your resume. Don't put it on there. Tell me about a project that you did that was interesting so you can talk about it and I can see your approach. You can tell me what you learned. You can tell me the, the things that went wrong, right? What did, what did you have to do? That sort of stuff is interesting when I interview people and makes them stand out and be distinct. Uh, so that, that's my tip for you. So put your poker game on there if you were proud of it, even if you weren't super proud of it. Like, hey, you know, and then you can say the next things I would have done if I had more time. Here's, here's what I, else I had in mind. Like. Software is rarely ever done, done, right? We're, we're, a lot of times we always going to be modifying and maintaining and making our stuff better and better and better as we go. So it should be a lot of fun. So, all right, I'll go ahead and stop and let me know what I can do. If not, I'll see you in two weeks for presentations. Uh, we'll do it here in the game lab.